Down to public comment. This is your opportunity to address the Board of Education on any issue, whether it's an agenda item or not. I have sheets for three speakers. Our first speaker is Ms. Patty Seidel. Good evening, President Clark, Dr. Wallace, and board. Um, I have concern, obviously, about the 90 layoffs, but I'm really concerned about the process and whether or not you understand the difference between displacement and layoff. We currently are in a phase until Monday uh, asking for voluntary displacement, someone who wants to displace themselves from the building. We then, by program, reduce program and have involuntary displacements. Those people put a pool together of displaced teachers. They have the opportunity then to come, as we've done in the past, uh, the associations work with the HR department, for those teachers to select any open positions that they're qualified or certified for based on seniority. If there aren't any, and I suspect uh, listening to the budget conversations over the last few weeks that there won't be a lot of those, uh, those teachers then go through a process where they look at the whole district and they bump someone who is least the least senior in a position that they are qualified and certified for. And then you identify who is laid off. The 30-day notice for that has to go out by May 9th, by the end of the school year. That's a pretty hefty project to do in within the next eight days. Okay. So I'm concerned that we're not going to be able to deliver on that 30-day notice in a timely manner. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. Sorry, it's uh, Pam Dillon. Thank you. I promise this will be very short. I am an art teacher at uh, uh, Dwight Rich Middle School and I've been there for 10 years. Um, and the quote that I'm going to read to you was written by a graphics art student in New York who had gone to jail, um, was on the wrong path, discovered graphic arts, and now he's very successful. And this was in Parade Magazine one Sunday a couple of years ago. Art is the last three letters in the word heart. I'm here for the students, not for me, because I'll be retiring in a few years. But I'm very concerned with the future of our education. As we all know, if you don't use a muscle, um, that it can atrophy. And we have two sides to our brain, the left side and the right side. The left side is the logical, the right side is the creative. I can't tell you how important it is to have both and to nurture both. Um, in middle school, I'm concerned the students don't have a variety of electives um, because how do you know if you have ability in music if you've never played a musical instrument? How do you know if you don't have ability in art? Usually there are people who are very good in art, but I think all students are good in art. It just needs to be taught right. Um, next, um, the MEA has a magazine article this month on the connection between math and art. And uh, one of the things that I have taught in the past is tessellations. If you're familiar with MC Escher, uh, they have templates and the students learn, they combine art and math in that project. Um, also, art is the first language. And it's especially important for any inner city students who can't and don't sometimes don't read very well. And it's proven that at-risk inner city children who have art improve their academics. And last, I really believe ad imagination is more important than knowledge. And that quote came from Albert Einstein. Would we go to the moon? Would we have had someone uh, create an airplane if someone hadn't dreamed or watched a bird and watched how their wings moved and so forth? Um, and what we think of as fact, if there isn't someone who has an imagination, I really do believe that um, we wouldn't have those things. So cutting the arts education really, I feel, cuts into the heart of education. Thank you. Thank you. Our final speaker is Mr. David C. <laughs>
Thank you. Not into Monday, so don't start that time yet. Dave Hockaday, President of Lansing Educational Assistance. David C. Hockaday, you're right, Mr. Clark. Um, I would like to speak to uh, the agenda items you've talked about, but I would like to add the word collaboration. We've talked about it, uh, we talk about doing it, we've heard it in the press. Uh, all three subjects I want to talk about tonight deal with collaboration. One of them is, I've heard from a number of board members talking about what you must do because the contract says so. That's an agreement between the labor units and the school board, school administration, to come up with a way of taking care of staffing needs before the summertime hits. That's why those deadlines are there. Now, our deadlines with my unit are not the same as the teacher's unit. But at the same time, I know that at least in both of our contracts, and we represent a majority of the staff within this Lansing School District, the goal is to work collaboratively, find out the staffing needs, so we do not have members that we represent out there during the summer wondering if they have a job. But that must mean we must work collaboratively, and we must start early enough not late. So I urge you as the board and urge you as administration to start the collaboration and discussion. On Monday night, you spoke about the 90 and 10 and 20, but we can't get any specifics. Apparently, no one has specifics. Without specifics, it's hard to work collaboratively. So I would ask, first of all, you push that forward so we can do so to represent not only our staff, but the students that they would like to serve. The other part in collaboration deals with the strategic plan. We talked about it when we assisted in the hiring of the superintendent and many other administrators, and yet I still see us being somewhat left out in the discussion of strategic plan. One of the ways of doing that is what we used to do over the last 14 years of my time is the board retreat that Mr. Davis brought up. We were involved in the board retreat. We were involved in the discussion of the strategic plan. If we're not invited, we can't be involved. So I want to use the word of collaboration, because you guys use it, we use it, we predict it out there amongst our community. It's very hard to do if we don't talk about it. You have collaboratively went out for the magnet schools, embraced folks to join this Lansing School District population. We're filling up buildings involved with the magnet schools. We've made promises, as Ms. Cornish brought up earlier, to the community how we're going to serve those students. Now, all of a sudden, if it's not in the paper correctly or if we don't stand collaboratively, the question is, are we going to follow through with what we said we were going to do? Or are we going to make cuts so when those kids come to apply, they're not getting the services that we collaboratively said we would give them. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Hockett.